Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another episode of What TV Shows I Saw, August 2023 edition. Here we go again. Another month, another video intro where I say something along the lines of, the TV scene has been weird or unpredictable lately, huh? Yeah, I, I know it's getting old. Recently, I've been wanting for this series to get back to its roots. Streamlined, if you will. No need for a long-winded explanation like last month, since I basically got everything off my chest about you-know-what already. Not to mention the fact that these videos are becoming longer than Jason Love. We're in need of a more direct, concise recap, seeing that there frankly still isn't a whole lot to talk about right now. And besides, I don't want to waste your time. I mean, that's what Gran Turismo exists for. So let's dive right into it like we're Philip DeFranco. Oh, I... I guess Jason Love could fit there too. Sheesh, gonna have to call up Savannah, because this wordplay is hot. Maybe not as hot as the MasterChef kitchen though, because boy has the drama heated up. This current season actually premiered back in May, but I only got around to watching it this month, and I'm glad I did, as MasterChef never disappoints. The gimmick this year is that they have five contestants per region of the US, those being the East, West, Midwest, and South, with the subtitle this year being called the United Tastes of America. Oh, and they doubled down on this too, as the Baking Challenge episode is called the United Cakes of America. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, do you see why I put this one off for so long? I mean, I'm the only person allowed to make bad jokes. Go back to fucking up grilled cheese, Ramsey. Aside from that one minor detail though, the competition is exactly as you've come to know it. This is old school MasterChef at its best. So far my favorite contestants that I'm rooting for are Colby, Brynn, and Kennedy. Oh, and Sav. Not because I think she's particularly great at cooking or anything, she's actually only won like two challenges so far, but more so because God-fearing Southern brunettes are my favorite genre of women, where my Madison Bush stands at. But yeah, this show doesn't need my cosign, it's MasterChef. What do you want me to say? By the way, it's also nice knowing that this series still has a cult YouTube fandom that religiously uploads new episodes each week. That's how I discovered MasterChef nearly a decade ago, FYI. While we're on the topic of Gordon Ramsay, the only new releases of this month were brand new shows produced by him that aired on YouTube? Yeah, for the first time, at least that I'm aware, Ramsay launched fully produced budgeted content not on Fox, but instead on a channel named Byte, a new venture hosting original programming in the same vein as BuzzFeed's Tasty or Twisted from Australia. These types of channels peaked around four to five years ago in the late 2010s, but never before has anything like this gotten the stamp of approval, or more importantly, the signed checks, of someone in the industry as notable as Gordon Ramsay, as he has handpicked food tubers, TikTokers, and fan favorite contestants of his Fox shows to host their very own series under the Bite name. And so far, they've released two shows Cashback Kitchen, hosted by Instagram star Lorenzo Espada, better known as Renzo and From Scratch with Teeny, a series presented by Next Level Chef contestant Tina K. Younger. Cashback Kitchen, while an okay concept, drops the ball with one of the most cardboard hosts in a long while, and guests that just piss me off. The idea is to teach everyday Joes who spend way too much on takeout how to recreate their favorites at home, but what drives me nuts is how obscene these people's receipts are. Like in this one episode, this couple, no cap, spends $1,000 a month on sushi. $12,000 a year on some rice and fish. And they act like this is no big deal, that they drop what someone could buy a well-kept used car with on California rolls. Like, I'm Japanese, I love sushi with all my heart, but y'all, that is just unreal. That's one of the more extreme examples, but the core idea is that these people have no control on their food budget, and to be honest, it's pretty hard to watch. Scratch Made, on the other hand, is more akin to time-tested home runs like Gourmet Makes and Joshua Weissman's But Better, in which the hosts recreate popular snack foods and restaurant dishes with homemade ingredients. Teeny is a fan favorite, with this show so far carrying the channel, getting upwards of 10 times the standard amount of views as anything else they've produced so far on YouTube or Instagram, and for good reason. She's funny, she's got a great attitude on cooking, 
and she's got good chemistry with her boyfriend Antoine, who often acts as her taste tester in these episodes, trying her homemade versions of Hot Pockets and Popeye's chicken sandwiches. As a whole, this channel is still fresh off the grill and needs some time to integrate into the larger food content world, but I do see a lot of potential here. There's reportedly two other launch shows yet to debut, one of which is hosted by Tasty alum Alex Traeger and her girlfriend Zoya, which I'm quite excited for. So we'll see in, say, a year's time if Byte does indeed have enough Byte to compete with the Titans, or if this New Age experiment flops and gets thrown into the compost. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I caught a few episodes of Celebrity Family Feud this month, and it's always a blast. Family Feud, as many of you know, is my all-time favorite game show, and by adding folks like Adam Devine, Sophia Bush, or Neil Patrick Harris to the party, I mean, come on, bro. Even if it's obvious that Disney just uses it as a 60-minute commercial. Seriously, Cruel Summer versus The Wonder Years. In the good timeline, that means Taylor Swift versus Dan Campbell, but in this one, that means some middling freeform drama versus another Disney commercial disguised as television. But anything with Steve Harvey's gotta be good, and Family Feud in any form is always entertaining. As promised, I also watched through Twisted Metal, and man, this was good. Like, really good. Maybe the most addicting show of the year so far. This was a fun binge with some great emotional elements paired with laugh out loud funny ones. A lot of people are going to compare this to something like The Walking Dead or The Last of Us due to the post-apocalyptic setting, but this show feels way different, which is much appreciated seeing how many shows have attempted the style to more mixed results lately. When put side by side to those other series, this show has color in every frame, and by that I mean they cast a black dude as the lead. It's so vibrant and bright and other synonyms I'm too lazy to look up at the moment. It feels like the game's in the best way possible, not taking itself too seriously while having a surprising amount of depth in a way that feels raw and realistic. The cast is outstanding, particularly the tag team of Will Arnett and Samoa Joe as Sweet Tooth, my personal favorite character of the show. In fact, I would say in general the characters were all really well developed, even if some of the side characters were extremely cartoony. Like, there's one guy whose whole personality is being able to smash a watermelon with his dick. That's not even a euphemism or anything, straight up smash watermelon, no rubber in sight. But yeah, that's essentially the antithesis of this show. Very over the top and silly while simultaneously being able to find very human elements in this wild, outrageous world. Really, really well done, folks. Oh, and um, I'm not going to say they're the best per se, but with the help of Twisted Metal, maybe the most consistent. I mean, every original that I've seen on there is fantastic. And I guess that's not that surprising. I mean, NBC has, of course, historically only presented the ones that are eight and higher. One show that I started this month off the recommendation of my brother Matt was the show on Adult Swim called Off the Air, a brilliant psychedelic masterpiece that combines all sorts of forms of art to create the most unique episodes of television you've ever seen. Each scene is stringed together by a theme that's the title of said episode, whether it's something like food, color, space, animals, etc., and uses animation, skits, music, stop motion, and psychedelic elements to create a trippy, soothing experience. Sorry if this is a little confusing, it's really one of those shows that you have to see for yourself in order to understand, like most Adult Swim shows. But just like most Adult Swim shows as well, Off the Air is great in ways you never imagined prior to seeing with your own two eyes. When I made my Top 100 Best Female Pop Singers video earlier this month, I fell down a Wikipedia rabbit hole on, of all people, Ashley Tisdale, and found out about the series called Clipped, a TBS sitcom from 2015 created by Will and Grace writers David Cohan and Max Munchnik, and features sitcom veterans George Wendt, Reginald Vell Johnson, and Tisdale in a raunchy workplace comedy. Right away, the show bears an insane resemblance to Two Bro Girls, so you can see why it caught my attention. 
as it's a workplace sitcom with a racy edge in which they also make fun of their boss constantly, toss racist and sexist jabs at each other, and talk about sex in nearly every conversation. Shit, there's even a promo clip that rang more than a couple bells in my mind when I first saw it. So while it's not the most innovative show out there, it's a damn funny one. The cast's electric chemistry with each other makes you feel like part of this tight-knit group right from the start. I guess it's no wonder then that two of them would eventually start dating IRL after the show wrapped up and would actually get hitched in 2018. They also just so happened to be on Celebrity Family Feud this month. Man, I gotta say, the more life I've lived, the less I feel like I've lived. You feel me? But yeah, the cast is super solid here. I also feel like this is one of those cases where even though there is some good character development, it could have been amazing had the show continued on past its first season. It does feel a little stunted in that respect, but on the flip side, this is a super quick watch if you're looking for an underrated sitcom in which a former Disney star, well I don't want to give it away, but yeah, let's just say that wouldn't fly in the house of mouse. The Ned's podcast continued to push out funny conversations with its likable hosts for another month's worth of episodes. Guests as per usual brought some great insight to the show and the industry as a whole, and in general this series was always a reliable comfort watch whenever I needed a pick me up, which is so nice to know that regardless of whatever chaos is happening in the real world, these three 30 year olds will always be here making fart jokes. Another comfort watch for me this month was easily one of my favorites from the entire year so far, and is pretty much guaranteed to be a top 5 finisher come December. It was truly that out of this world. Oh, oh right, you, you didn't realize that was supposed to be a pun. The show is Stars on Mars, so um, yeah, let's, let's run that back. It was truly out of this world. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you, thank you. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so much, everybody. Stars on Mars is by far the dumbest show on this list, but I do not care. I can't tell you the last time I was this engaged with a series. The basic premise revolves around 12 celebrities competing in a simulation to see what it's like to be an astronaut on Mars, and the challenges that come with managing a crew, as well as physical challenges dealing with survival skills. It includes elements ripped straight out of the Big Brother and Survivor playbooks, so in theory, I should despise this show since I can't stand either one of those series, but the celebrities they chose, coupled with this extremely cartoony setting, made it pure fodder for awkward laugh out loud funny moments. I have no way of definitively proving this, but I'd bet every dollar I have to my name that I fell off my bed the most amount of times while watching this show, more than any other, just because I was laughing that hard. The celebrities in question are on a wide spectrum, touching all corners of entertainment, from athletes like Marshawn Lynch and Ronda Rousey, R&B singer Tanache, comedians Andy Richter and Natasha Liedro, Chef Kat Cora, McLovin, Ariel Winter, and it all being hosted by William frickin' Shatner. I mean, come on, man, put some respect on his name. I know I'm not gonna win over a lot of people with this one just because these types of shows are a dime a dozen nowadays, and most folks are over the whole, look, we have celebrities doing wacky things for your entertainment sort of vibe. But at least for me, this was a show that I absolutely fell in love with just because I had some personal stuff and it was kind of a shitty month overall to be honest. And Stars on Mars reminded me more than any other series from the past few weeks that TV is meant to be fun. And I had so much fun with this show. I also finished up The Walking Dead Dead City this month. And I'm fully convinced y'all are just glazing this one because y'all want to spread your own glaze on Maggie. That's it. That's the review. And that's everything I watched this month. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it and hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for subbing to my channel and liking my videos as always. I always appreciate your guys' support. And I'd like to wish you a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one.